Turn with me to James chapter 5. Up in the sound room, I do hear some buzzing. I think in one of the monitors up here, you might want to cut them off. James 5, got it, James 5, 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, the word err is that of wandering from the truth. And it is a recognition here that it is possible for a person to wander from the truth. All of us know people who were once walking with the Lord, but are no longer walking with him today. They have wandered from the truth the truth, some of them into false doctrine, some into a total denial of the truth. I think of a man by the name of Charles Templeton. Back in the 40s, when the Youth for Christ was a very popular youth movement throughout the United States, Charles Templeton was very active. He began about the same time as Billy Graham, and uh, they were very close friends, and he was also an outstanding evangelist, led many people to Jesus Christ. He became a pastor of a church up in Canada, and he was sort of known as the Canadian Billy Graham. But in his later years, he resigned his church and he turned from his faith in Jesus Christ. He denied his faith in Jesus Christ. He declared that intellectually, he could no longer believe in the God of the Bible. That uh, he wrote this book called Farewell to God, in which he tells about his turning away from his faith and his belief in God. In the book, in the earlier part, he tells about his conversion experience in his earlier years. But then how that through time, he just could no longer accept intellectually uh, the idea or concept of God or of his son, Jesus Christ, dying for our sins. Wandering from the faith, wandering from the truth. Paul exhorted Timothy to hold fast the sound teaching or the truth, which you have heard from me. Hold it fast. It is important that we do hold fast to the teaching of the word of God. In Hebrews 2.1, we're exhorted to give the more earnest heed to the things that we've heard, lest at any time we should let them slip, and that let them slip is lest at any time we should drift away from them. <laughs> is it in the sound room or is it something down here we're getting a... Okay. Can't do much about that, I guess. We'll be in the tent next week. They will be all right. <laughs> John, if you're backstage, you might see what you can do with that. It sounds like someone's reversed a plug. Yeah. Good.
In Hebrews 2.1, we are told that we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should drift away from them. Solomon spoke of the true wisdom, which is manifested in truth. He said, hear my children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law, for I was my father's son, tender and loved by him and by my mother. And he taught me and he said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, don't forget it. Neither wander from the words of my mouth. Forsake not truth or wisdom, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all of your getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee, and she shall bring thee honor. And when you embrace her, hold fast the truth. Don't let it go, for it is thy life. And then in Proverbs 23, 23, he said, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. It's important that we realize that Satan is out there trying to rob you of your relationship with Jesus Christ, trying to challenge in your mind the truth of God, bringing up things to create doubt on the word of God. And that's why we are told to hold fast to the truth. Writing to Titus, Paul said, hold fast the faithful word that you were taught that you may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. In Hebrews 3, 6, we are told, but Christ as the son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the truth, firm unto the end. But that importance to holding on to the truth, firm until the end, it's interesting that when Jesus wrote the seven churches in the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, he said in chapter 225, but hold fast until I come that which you have. Revelation 3, 3, remember therefore how you have received and heard and hold fast and repent. Revelation 3, 11, behold, I come quickly, hold fast that which you have that no man may take thy crown. The fact that we are exhorted over and over to hold fast does indicate that tendency to oftentimes drift away from the basic truths that we know. I can only believe that the Lord emphasizes holding fast because of the need to do so, the tendency of many to wander away. Look at the things in the New Testament that are connected with truth, holding fast to the truth. We are to have, first of all, a love for the truth. Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians 2.10 that the Antichrist is coming with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And so we are to love the truth. We'll get it. <coughs> Great. Thanks, John. So we're to have a love for the truth. In Galatians 5, 7, Paul said, You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So not only... Are we to uh, love the truth? But we are to obey the truth. 2 Corinthians 4, 2. We should manifest the truth. Paul wrote, 
but you have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We're to speak the truth in love, Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love, may you grow up into him in all things. It is something that you should bear witness of, John 18.37 Pilate therefore said to Jesus, Are you a king? Jesus answered, You asked if I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. It's something that when we know it, we have assurance. It gives us assurance. John in his first epistle said, Hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. The truth will set you free, John 8, 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ultimately, or finally, the Spirit guides us into all truth. Jesus told the disciples, howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you of things to come. The truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There are many people today who are wandering from the truth. There's a movement afoot across the nation, and it is a growing movement. It is being embraced by many well-known ministers. It is called the Emergent Church. And they are forsaking the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father but by me. But they're suggesting that there are different roads to God and that Islam is a path to God, and that uh, Buddhism is a, another path to God, and they are really forsaking the truth that Jesus is indeed the way, the truth, and the only way unto God. They question, really, so many of the things that we have accepted and believed as truth. Uh, they question whether or not Hell is actually a literal place. Uh, they question whether or not homosexuality is a real sin. Uh, and um, they're talking of really uh, contemplative prayer, discovering the God in you, and uh, having some kind of mantra that you repeat. And it's sort of transcendental meditation in a new form that they are encouraging people in the church to practice. These things are wandering away from the truth. Uh, and it is sad that it seems to be so easy to wander from the truth. One of the pastors recently said that one of the greatest dangers in the world today is fundamentalism. Islamic fundamentalism and Christian fundamentalism. Do you know what fundamentalism is as far as the Christian is concerned? These are the five points of fundamentalism. Number one, the inerrancy of the scriptures. The fundamentalist believes that the Bible is an inspired word of God, inerrant in its original writings. The fundamentalists believe in the virgin birth and the deity of Jesus Christ. The fundamentalists believe in the doctrine of substitutionary atonement 
through the death of Jesus for our sins, which we celebrated a little earlier. The fundamentalists believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And the fundamentalists believe in the authenticity of the miracles in the Bible of Jesus and of his premillennial second coming. So watch out. I'm one of the most dangerous persons in the world today because I am a Christian fundamentalist. These are the things that I believe. However, I don't believe that I am a real danger to the world, to tell you the truth. So James talks about a person who has wandered from the truth, that one convert him. That is, bring him back to the truth. I believe that we should seek to convert those who have turned from the truth as well as those who are lost. In my experience, it seems easier, however, to convert a person who is lost than one who has wandered away from the truth. Like Charles Templeton, who we mentioned earlier, who declared that he could no longer intellectually believe in the God of the Bible, uh, Jesus said, it's important that we come as a little child. One of the beautiful things about a little child is the simplicity of their faith. And I think that sometimes we try to make faith such a complex thing. And, and it's just that simple faith that God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. And, and just to take the scriptures and, and to just accept and receive the scriptures. So those that have wandered from the truth, we should seek to convert them and bring them back to the truth. I don't always understand everything in the scripture, but I believe it. There are some things that I believe that I cannot really uh, tell you why I believe them, except that they are in the scriptures. And, and just because they are there, I believe them. I may have intellectual difficulty with some of the things. There, do, there does seem to be uh, some kind of a contradiction at times. But I believe them. And I believe by faith that which I don't understand. I don't understand everything, but I believe the Bible is God's truth and God's word, and I will hold to it. God said to Ezekiel, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel that feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and you clothe yourself with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. The diseased have you not strengthened, and neither have you healed those that were sick. Neither have you bound up the broken, neither have you brought again those which were driven away. Neither have you sought those which were lost, but with force and with cruelty you've ruled them, and they were scattered and because there was no shepherd, and they became a prey to all of the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth, and no one did search or seek them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, my flock became meat to the beasts of the field, and because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from the feeding of the flock, and neither shall my shepherds feed themselves any more. 
for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will both search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which were, was broken, and will strengthen those which are weak. So God talks about the failure to reach out to those that have wandered away, seeking to bring them back to the truth. And the Lord ultimately said that he would do it himself because of the failure of his shepherds. Ezekiel 3.17, the Lord said to Ezekiel, Son of man, I've made you a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore, hear my words. And give warning from me. For when I say to the wicked, you will surely die, and you do not give them warning or speak to warn them to save his life, the same wicked man will die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he turns not from his wickedness, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you have not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at your hand. God is telling Ezekiel, when, when a person wanders away from the truth, and I command you to go and to warn that person, the righteousness that they have done won't be remembered and they will die in their sin but God said I will require their blood at your hand because you didn't warn them here James is telling us brethren if you do err from the truth and one convert him let him know that he which uh, converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Daniel said, And they that are wise shall shine as the brightness of, of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. To reach out and to turn them back to the truth, you will save a soul from death. To lead someone who has wandered away back into the fold, you're saving them from death. And also it says, shall hide a multitude of sins. David speaks of the blessedness of the man whose sin is covered. Proverbs 10, 12 tells us, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. Peter writes, and above all things, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover a multitude of sins. And so you save them from death, and you cover their sins. So may God help us that if we see someone who is wandering away, we will go in love and share with them the truth and seek to draw them back unto the truth that we might save them from death and that their sins might be forgiven. Father, help us tonight to take seriously the challenge of reaching out to that wandering soul, that one who has slipped into error. And Lord, may we seek to restore them back to a faith in you, back to fellowship with you. Help us, Lord, that we might be faithful servants as we minister to your flock. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand? Maybe you are one of those 
who have wandered from the truth. And maybe this is the night the Lord is drawing you back, back to the truth. Sometimes we, with our intellect, get carried away. And, and that seems to be, to me, the real problem as I observe the emergent church. It is one of those things that sort of has that um, intellectual appeal. And uh, it's, it, it draws the person away from the truth. I begin to and seek to intellectualize things. And it's almost, well, um, I will believe this scripture, but I, I don't know about this one. And again, it, it's starting to take apart the Bible. And it's sort of a pick and choose. I uh, choose what parts I want to believe because I can, you know, sort of go along with that. But there's other parts that, well, I don't like what that says, and maybe I don't believe that. And, and I think that it's important that, uh, again, as we said earlier, come in simple faith and just believing and trusting the word of God. And so uh, tonight, maybe you need to return to the truth. And, and these men are down here to pray for you. Maybe you are in need of a touch from God in your body tonight, and they're here to minister to you physically. Uh, Jesus is here to minister to you physically. They can be his instrument, uh, as uh, the Bible says, that if we uh, are sick, come to the elders of the church, call for them, and let them anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick. The Lord will raise them up. And if they committed sin, they shall be forgiven. So uh, they're here to minister tonight, and we encourage you to take advantage of it and just uh, spend some time in prayer. If for nothing else, for the tent meeting that's going to begin uh, next week, that God will just really move mightily in a very powerful way. Lord, we do pray that you will move in this whole area, a mighty move of your spirit. Lord, we know what it is. We've experienced that sovereign work of your spirit. The church was pretty much born, Lord, in a powerful move of your spirit. And Lord, we desire to see again the moving of your spirit in the hearts and the lives of people. We realize, Lord, that unless you build the house, we labor in vain. And so, Lord, we're asking you, pour out your spirit upon this ministry, upon our lives, and, Lord, do a powerful work in this whole community, surrounding areas, Lord, even as you have in the past. May your spirit, Lord, draw many unto the truth that we might walk, Lord, in your truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. I will serve you because I love you. You have given life to me. I was nothing until you found me. You have given life to me. Heartaches, broken people. Ruin lies are why you died on Calvary. Your touch is what I long for. You have given life to me. You have given.